Well, I have some material that I've uh, amassed from the month of August that you may have missed. Okay. Um, let me pull this up. I want to be honest with people too. Like if I know about this, I'm not going to pretend I don't. Yep. Um, I saw that Dave Rubin did a back online and I believe him when he says he hasn't known any mm -hmm. of this, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not going to pretend I don't know about yep. it just for yep. a fact. I'll be well, honest. Do you know about Shia LaBeouf's uh, conversion? Yes. What I know about Shia LaBeouf is that he was on Bishop Barron's show because mm -hmm. I had my next door neighbor tell me I got to get him on my show. He thinks I have way more influence than I do, I think. <laughs> so I haven't watched the video, though, and I mm -hmm. hear that Bishop Barron interviewed him. Yep. That's all I know. That's right. Okay. Well, I'll give you a little bit of context before we play the clip. So, um, he, uh, last, I think it was 2021 and 2022, there were, uh, like allegations that kind of just completely destroyed his career. So he had had a, a sort of revival kind of of his, of what he was doing by- Show them your beautiful face, Nick. Yeah, sure. He made a couple movies like Peanut Butter Falcon and- I um, love that movie, by the way. And uh, I haven't but, seen it. Oh, it seems really good. terrific. It's so and charming. I think the other one was Honey Child or something like that, but that was kind of autobiographical about his father. Um, but then there came out some allegations against him. I think he's married too, so that's another layer on all these, but like people who he wasn't married with, allegations of like sexual abuse, physical abuse, lots of specific things you can look up if you want to that just- hmm not you know there's a reason why these things like destroyed his career they're pretty valid you know disturbing things um for someone to do especially in like a public sphere but just in general um but then he's uh listening to the the baron interview which is really good i recommend people go listen to all of it for full context um but he was at a like super low point in his life he basically was thinking that his career was over mm. wasn't even talking to his mother like had nobody in his life essentially. Um, and then a director reached out to him and started talking to him about Padre Pio. And he's like, I think I want to do a movie about Padre Pio. Wow. Are you interested? And he was like, well, I respect this director. In the interview he talks about like, at first it was just his ego. He's like, okay, well, I can get back on the horse here. I can be Padre Pio. This is what he said in the interview. Yeah, in the interview. And he's like, oh, well, Willem Dafoe is going to be involved. It's an even bigger movie. And I'm, not only am I getting back on the horse, it's going to be great. Um, but then the director said, okay, well, I want you to study for this. I want you to go to, he went to San Lorenz, Lorenzo, um, to monastery. And he said at first he was just living out of the back of his truck. He just parked out there and just lived out of the back of his truck, um, to prepare for the role. And he was sending videos and stuff. But, uh, as he goes along, he talks about how his, um, study becomes more and more like personal. He talks about, I don't think I've in this clip spe specifically, but, uh, one of the monks had him read the gospel and he was like, I'd never actually read the gospel. Um, wow. But he talks here about a little bit where he was in his life at that point. So we'll play that one. All right. And at the time of my life, like I didn't yeah. want to swim anymore. I had a gun on the table. I was out of here. Uh, I didn't want to be alive anymore when all of this happened. Okay. Uh, shame like I had never experienced before. Kind of shame. You forget how to breathe. You don't know where to go. You can't go outside Listen. and get like a... A taco, like you don't but, want to go in. And anywhere. that's where you are when you're up there reading the gospel and, and thinking about the yes. playing Tyree Peel. You're yes. in that state. Yes. But I'm also in this like this deep desire to like hold on. Yeah. And so I read the gospel with this man, Jude, and I keep hearing like in many different variations of it. I'm not gonna explain the whole gospel here, nor do I need to, it's you. But I, I keep hearing <laughs> let go. Mm -hmm. And to a person who's been gripping so tight for so long, mm. it feels like ah. Uh, uh, it just feels like it's just um, um, it just feels like the right move to let go, like s complete surrender for real, and um, and it stops being this like prep of a movie, and it starts being something that feels beyond all that. And I stop sending videos. Like at a certain point with Jude, I just like really fall in, and then I meet these win these, these women, the Sister Lucia of the uh, um, the. Uh, uh, um, Sacred Heart Sisters, who starts really like catechizing me in a very real way, in a very like, let's go through it and let's talk about it paragraph by paragraph. Falling into this group and I'm living there. So I'm taking showers in, in there and I'm eating with them and we're hanging out. And, and they're I, drawing you into the, the Christian, the Catholic thing. They're kind yeah. of drawing you into the gospel, into a certain way but of But more life. than that, it's not even like they're trying to, they're drawing me into like laughter. They're like sharing <laughs> yeah. jokes with me. It's like we're just like hanging out. And I'm eating their ice cream yeah. and I'm eating them out of house and home. <laughs> And I'm filling the tacos back up, but like, I'm really like, I'm, I'm, they're not asking nothing of me. They're not asking me to sign nothing. They're not asking me to do nothing or yeah. take pictures. Mm. I'm just like sitting around and I'm petting their cats and 
I'm hanging out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. So yeah. I think it just seems like a really, because at first, of course, I'm like super skeptical, you know, yeah. following, there's a lot of stuff that happened in like, during COVID uh, and, and during the, after Trump got elected, that there's just a lot of things that's like, just seems like pure, like craziness from, mm -hmm. uh, from Shia. Oh, really? Uh, and then seeing this after, I'm very skeptical of like, you know, yeah. and, and like the Kanye conversion thing. It just seems like a lot of instability uh, sometimes. But then watching this interview, I think there is, and just hearing stuff like that, I think that it's super unique for him. And I can imagine for a celebrity uh, to just have that experience of, being in a monastery and having been in a monastery, it's like, they don't want anything from you. This yeah. is like, that's probably really refreshing to be around people who don't care that he's famous. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. I got, um, I got, I got a few thoughts cause I haven't seen this before. Um, the first is how important it is for us Catholics to have charity to our brothers and sisters when they sin. Um, and I'm sorry for the times that I haven't done that on this podcast, you know, where maybe I've called out people's stuff, uh, and in an uncharitable way. Like, I think if something's public, if something's in the public domain, other people have a right to comment on it in the public domain as well. Like, if I record a video and I say something that someone finds objectionable, I don't think they necessarily need to contact me first before responding to it publicly. If I say it privately, then I think they ought to do that. Um, so, okay, but I, I just, yeah, we have to have so much charity. Like, I don't know anything about this fella, but you, you could imagine what would it be like for him if when he was getting dumped on after having done, apparently, I don't know, mm -hmm. certain things that were shameful and evil, you know, if all these Christians started like piling on him instead of extending a hand of mercy, you know, mm -hmm. that would have just sort of prevented him perhaps um, or pushed him further away. And I got a actually a story about this. This happened mm -hmm. to me. I was just in Mankato, Minnesota for my sister's wedding mm -hmm. uh, reception here in America. A crazy thing happened. So we are right on camp, right by this big public university campus. I forget sure. what it's called. Um, but I went to um, that coffee shop, Caribou Coffee. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm exhausted and I walk down there and I'm sitting in this couch and I'm just looking around. And, you know, there's this, there's this young woman there, you know, and I, I got to be honest, like, I feel that when I'm not good with our Lord and I don't trust in his love and affection to me, when I don't trust in his providential care, that all will be well, I start to get nervous. I start to get scared. And when I get scared, I become more and more judgmental. Mm. It's like I have to order the world around me because I don't trust there's anybody around me to do it. And so I take it upon myself to sort of say who's in and who's out in my own head. So like a lot of judgment when I see people who are dyeing their hair purple and blue to look like anime characters and ripped jeans that are so ripped it feels like you know, there's so little fabric on them. And I'm, I just, I get angry, like, um, I, not angry, but just like, I don't know, like cynical or just like, ah, oh, this is freaking ridiculous. Like, and I'll just sit, my, my head just starts talking like that all the time. Instead of looking at someone and seeing them as a beloved daughter or a beloved son of God. Now, obviously we should make judgments about things and I th it might be objectively sad if somebody is dressing in a particular way that might be immodest. But how come I don't look at these people or look at somebody uh, um, and say, like, here's a beloved child of God who may not know her dignity or he may not know his dignity. Like, look upon them with love, right? So anyway, so I'm sitting in this coffee shop and I'm, I'm looking at this girl and I look down at what she's reading. And guess what she's reading? The porn myth. My <laughs> book! Isn't that wild? That's wild. No way. She's got my book in front of her. Huh. And there's a little yellow uh, sticker on it, which sh signaled to me that this was a university book, huh. that she was reading this for university. Mm -hmm. And that was, in fact, the case. So I went up to her. I'm like, hi, <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that book. And it's so funny because I would never just go up to a random stranger. Mm -hmm. But I was so like, what is happening right mm -hmm. now? So I walked over. I'm like, hey, that, that I wrote that book. And then... <laughs> trying not to be creepy. I was like, mm -hmm. hey, see my, my photos on the back. Like I'm not just pretending to write porn books in Minnesota <laughs> coffee shops. Like I actually did write that book. Mm -hmm. And it was cool because she opened it up and she showed me how much she had highlighted and said oh, that wow. she was enjoying it. Um, and that was just beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. first of all, how cool is that, that there's a public university in Minnesota that's mandating that people read my book, The Porn Myth. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to somebody else in Minnesota who they said, yeah, they were, they were assigned this book in class 
and that it was interesting to see people's reaction from the beginning to the end. Because at the mm. beginning, they were rather kind of critical of my work, but then many of them came around and saw the points mm. that I was making. So yeah. I was like, thank you, Lord, what a blessing. That's awesome. But then secondly, how about not being so judgmental? Mm. How about looking at people with, with sympathy mm. and kindness? And anyway, that's the first thing that I thought of when we see this fella is just to, mm -hmm. to, to love on, on yeah. folks and take a break from criticizing them. Second thing is how fantastic Bishop Robert Barron is. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, Jordan Peterson's wife said, she, well, Jordan Peterson said of his wife that she has begun praying the rosary daily mm -hmm. uh, thanks to Bishop Robert Barron. <laughs> um, yeah, and it seems like Barron has that approach. Like he tends to be kind of just kind of compassionate and with people. I don't, I don't see him online slamming folks or calling out people and... Um, so that's beautiful. Uh, third thing I would say is I'm always like reluctant to mm -hmm. celebrate anybody's conversion when they're in the limelight. Mm -hmm. Not because I'm not, not because I don't want to like celebrate their conversion. That's something to celebrate, but because I've put, you know, I think Catholics tend to put too much emphasis on celebrity Catholics who then just disappoint them. Mm -hmm. So like Jim Gaffigan makes a big deal about being a Catholic, but then he'll he'll say things that are, or, or appear to say things that are openly in contradiction with the Catholic faith. So I think it's, we should look to the saints, mm -hmm. not to Hollywood yep. celebrities, but we should still, I think, rejoice that this has taken place. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, that. that's my thoughts is it's people are like, Oh, I hope it's uh, a sincere conversion. And my thought is that's a good thing to hope for, for his sake as a human. Like, but I think that if you're expecting it to be like a, like, I don't know, even when people talk about like Peterson and his conversion, it's like, has he had Do you a want him to be? Uh, no, okay. uh, that didn't happen. In August. <laughs> I didn't know if something happened in August. But <laughs> my thoughts when people talk about that is: Do you want that for for his sake yeah. or for like or your team's sake? Yeah, your team's yeah. sake. It's not like a team game. Thing. Yeah. I think as love for the person and watching this interview, I think he really does have a sincere, beautiful conversion. Hmm. But I wouldn't like expect any glory for you personally from that. You know what yeah. I mean? Or from like the team. Yeah. I would just say that's good. This yeah. is a good thing. And it's a good reminder to be less kind of judgmental of people yep. in the public sphere, I feel like. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video.